So you're thinking of retiring and moving south. Or maybe the pandemic has showed you that, well, you can pretty much live anywhere and still work. And why not a warmer environment, right? Tropical, everyone eventually wants to move south. You've looked at Florida, decided against it. Good call on that one. And you know, up the coast, there's this long coastline of South Carolina. And in the southern part of that coastline between Savannah and Charleston, there's this Beaufort County and a very famous island in Beaufort County called Hilton Head Island. You've heard of it. Everyone sees it on TV for golf, for tennis. Travel and Leisure magazine in 2017 named it the second most beautiful island in the world. Condé Nast readers in 2021 named it the best island in the United States. And it's won that many, many times. So it's no wonder that so many people have this dream, retire, or just move south to Hilton Head Island, affluent, what's not to love on this beautiful island. But you don't want to go in with blinders because there are some great reasons to move to Hilton Head Island and live there. And there's some others that may not be for you. Oh, and by the way, if during this video or any time afterwards you have any questions whatsoever, just call me or text me. I'm happy to discuss this with you. And so what I see is that there are many people, who I know, that live on Hilton Head Island. They wouldn't want to live anywhere else. And there are others who have this dream to go to Hilton Head Island. They think they know what it's going to be like and what fits their lifestyle. And they get there three to five years later, they're moving someplace else. And so you got to go outside those blinders and appreciate the pros and the cons, the things that might fit your lifestyle and the things that might not. And let me just say, I love Hilton Head. And even though this may contain some negatives, I don't want any hate mail. Because look, I, I love Hilton Head Island. Uh, I am the liaison for the sister city relationship between Hilton Head Island and Verona, Italy. I'm on the board of the Italian American Club of Hilton Head Island. It's the biggest club on the island. I love it there. I'm friends with the mayor, the city manager but it doesn't necessarily mean I want to live there, okay? And that may be your situation as well. I'm Bob LaFave and I want to talk about five pros and five cons of living and moving to Hilton Head Island. On the pro side, number one, it's an island. <laughs> it's got 12 miles of beaches. And these aren't just any beaches, these are really nice beaches. Hilton Head Island does a fantastic job keeping up with its beaches, keeping them clean, keeping them very well nourished. Number two, recreation. Golf, that's your thing? You wanna learn it? Tennis, or even biking. You wouldn't believe the beautiful bike paths all over Hilton Head Island. They're fantastic. And if you're not sort of a physical recreation person, the cultural arts. There's an enormous cultural arts center here that is in part funded by the town and they have an organization associated with it that's always got something going on. You will stay active if you want to be on Hilton Head Island. Number three, shopping. Yeah, believe it or not, even though it's an island and some people think, well, everything's going to be a little more expensive and for the most part probably is, but the access you have to stores you wouldn't normally have access to. It's just incredible. For an island that's only got 40,000 people on it at any one time, the maximum, you've got great stores. Grocery stores that you only see in big cities and other stores for department stores that you, you'd have to go to another major metropolitan area like a Charleston or an Atlanta to find. So if you're into shopping, you're gonna be okay on Hilton Head Island. Number four, restaurant tourism. If you're a foodie, some of the best chefs in the South are on Hilton Head Island. And again, maybe it's the affluent nature of it that brings them there. Some fantastic restaurants from Ombra, Michael Anthony's, Nunzio's, Charlie's. I mean, these restaurants are outstanding. And again, to find so many excellent restaurants in a small place, a relatively small place, is absolutely incredible. If you're a foodie, good place to be. And number five, it's pristine. I mean, that's the amazing thing. When I bring people to Hilton Head Island with driving down the main drag, 278, they're like, where is everybody? Where are all the stores? Where? Because everything is shaded by trees. 
They keep everything natural there. Hilton Island does a great job with this. So if you're looking for something you think you'll recognize, like a Starbucks sign, you got to look because it's set back a little bit. And you may not realize that there's a whole community of five to 7,000 people right off the road here, but you can't see it because of everything they have that they've built up for trees, greenery, and it makes it look very natural and very aesthetically pleasing. But there are some cons or disadvantages, or at least things that you should consider and be aware of. Number one, housing costs. Have you looked yet? Rate.com has it this week, uh, average price per square foot on Hilton Island in the low 400s. I think it's higher than that. Compared to other parts of the county like Bluffton or Buford, 250, 275 a square foot. Bottom line is you just can't get as much house. The house that I live in now on Ladies Island, I could never buy on Hilton Head Island. So it's just something for you to keep in mind. You know, the environment in other parts of Beaufort County is pretty much the same. So access to Hilton Head if you really want to go there, but you've probably even got more water around the sea islands and you can get more land and more of a house. So at least do some due diligence and look around and know what you're getting for the dollar on Hilton Head Island and what you're getting in other areas of Beaufort County in this area. And keep in mind, it's not just the purchase price, it's the property taxes. You're paying for a name. And as long as you're cool with that, number two, traffic. It's an island. There is a one road, Highway 278, on the island, one road off the island. Now, it can be like a parking lot at some times during the day, particularly in the summer when the tourists hit. But really, to be completely honest, there isn't even a tourism season anymore. It's pretty much year round. So there are times when I'm just not even getting on the road on Hilton Head around rush hour because I'm going to get too frustrated sitting there. Is it Atlanta or Houston or, or Chicago? No but it's not what you would expect on Hilton Head Island. It can be extremely frustrating to get off the island, to go back on the island at certain points of the day. And then consider hurricane season and everybody trying to get off and then get back on. Number three, healthcare. It's a problem. Right now on Hilton Head Island, roughly half of all doctors are concierge doctors. No insurance, you pay one amount to have access to the doctor. Could be in some situations up to $2,000 a year. That doesn't include all of your testing and everything else that you have to do. So if you think you're moving to Hilton Head Island and you're gonna have no trouble finding a general practitioner who will just take you on in your insurance, Blue Cross Blue Shield or Medicare or whatever, you better think again you're probably going to have to go off the island to either Beaufort Memorial Hospital and some of their express care or even into Savannah or Charleston. I've heard it over and over and over again. That is an issue. And if you don't mind driving your doctor's appointments, and many people don't, to live on Hilton Head, that's fine. But you need to at least have your eyes open and be aware of that. Number four, other costs. It's an island. It takes a little more to get the product on. Then keep in mind that land is very valuable. That shop owner is paying a mint to be open and those costs end up coming to you. Now, you may not discern the difference depending on where you're coming from, but if you come from other parts, for example, of the South and you go to Hilton Head Island, you notice, wow, things are just a little bit more expensive here. Is that a big deal to you? No, maybe not, but at least you should be aware of it. And then number five, remember before I talked about the pristine environment and all the little rules and regulations that keep everything looking natural? Well, there's a flip side to that. All those rules and regulations can be really overbearing and very restrictive. And you see that oftentimes if you're just gonna visit a friend for dinner in another gated community. Oh my goodness, what you gotta go through to get in there? It's an act of Congress. 
So there are real regulations and restrictions that may sometimes feel artificial and feel a little weird and can be sometimes, at least in my view, a little overbearing. So that is taking the blinders off. Some of these pros may not mean a lot to you. Some of the cons may not mean a lot to you, but at least you need to go in knowing what Hilton Head Island is and, and what it isn't, what it fits your lifestyle and your desires and, and what doesn't. I do think overall, because I love Hilton Head Island, but I do think most people coming down this way really need to take a good look at Bluffton, Okatee, Beaufort, the Sea Islands too, and really sort of compare so they know what they're sort of buying into. They know what they're investing in. They know what they can experience and expect to experience when they eventually do come here. Listen, folks, I'm from Florida. I gotta tell you, I've never lived in a place like this before. I love it here. Beaufort is, and Beaufort County and Hilton Island is an unsung jewel, and people are finding it. Come down here before everybody else finds it. I'm Bob LaFave. If I can help you, just reach out to me. Take care for now.